Hello, everyone. I'm Jake Porway, one of the co-founders of Datakind. And I'm Craig Borowski, one of the other co-founders of Datakind. And we wanted to say, happy 10th anniversary. anniversary. <laughs> perfectly in sync, but perfectly really? heartfelt. Uh, look, we know that a lot of folks are going to be talking about uh, the current state of Datakind, where it's going in the future, all the excellent work that all of you volunteers, funders, staff, and everyone involved have done. We thought we'd take a quick opportunity to talk a little bit about the early days of Datakind. Now, you may have even heard this by now at this event, but every year we used to tell the story of the origin of Datakind, uh, which you may know started because back in the old days of 2008 or 2009, there weren't really a lot of options to do social good with data science, even though the term was blowing up. Um, and so foolishly, I, with a number of other data scientists in New York, started to ask the question, well, couldn't we just volunteer our time to go work with nonprofits or government agencies who seem to be swimming in data but didn't have anyone to look at it? Uh, and I was convinced this was such a bad idea that I didn't want anyone to really know about it and just put a little post on a blog that I had that was defunct, no one read, uh, but basically just served as a landing page that people could sign up on an email list if they were interested in joining. And I said, here's the link. I know no one wants to spend their weekend volunteering, working on data for good and all that stuff. But let me just see if there's anyone out there that is a kindred spirit. And so it was very much to my surprise when I came into work the next day or so and found hundreds and hundreds of people responding to this mailing list. Uh, because unbeknownst to me, and uh, were the powers of social media at work, when Tim O'Reilly and some other folks had picked up the post and had gone viral and they'd shared it out, all of a sudden there were people from all over the world writing to us saying, I want to be a part of what we were calling data without borders. I want to volunteer or I'm an NGO who wants to uh, get some help. And so that was really the uh, unexpected start of it all that made us turn to uh, each other and say, oh my goodness, we better do something here. <laughs> I think there's some other shout outs to, to talk about for those emails. The White House emailed you. Oh, that's right. Yeah. OSTP. <laughs> like, so, yeah, right. That, this sounds like a great program. Like hundreds of emails from lots of, uh, I don't know, notable places. Yeah. Very shocking. Very strange thing to find in your inbox. And you weren't really expecting it. They had this idea of like, hey, there's a lot of hackathons going on right now. What if we just put a spin on it and say, let's bring data scientists together with NGOs and really try this data for good thing and see what happens. So I just helped them put on the first event. I didn't know anything about data science or hadn't done any data science projects before. Um, but within just like, I don't know, six weeks time, we put on the first event in New York City. A month later, did the flu to SF to this other event. Um, they both went really well. Only a few months later, we did another event in DC. And then it was just like crazy uh, how palpable the excitement was. Just people were loving every event, telling us how much they, they wanted to keep doing this. Um, people telling us that we want to they should turn this into a real organization. Funders coming and talking to us saying like, hey, how can we get involved? And I, like, to be completely honest, Jake and I had no idea or thought of starting an organization. Neither of us thought we would be entrepreneurs in any sense. Um, and so we really had to like take, take a little time and reflect and be like, hey, can we, are we actually ready to do this? And like, after, I think probably like two months after the DC data dive, like we made the choice to be like, okay, let's actually quit our jobs. Let's secure some funding and let's try to see what this actually is and where this goes. Yeah. And in a lot of ways, um, you know, I thought we would remain volunteers because here we're running data dives in our spare time while we still had full-time jobs and thought, oh, that's good enough. We'll just keep doing it. But I really think it was a testament to, of course, the wisdom of those advisors who saw what was happening at a bigger scale than maybe we did, but really also the volunteers and the organizations who continued to follow up and say, we, how do we do another one? You know, who, who else can we get involved? I know these data scientists could be involved. It's that energy of the community that really, you know, sparked the need for us to kind of say, well, we've got to take this on. Not so much because like Craig was saying, we wanted to had a vision of running an organization as much as it felt there's, this needs support, you know, that it would be almost a disservice to the cause and to the community not to step in uh, and do something. So it was really a credit to the, the energy of the community that kept it going. Um, yeah. And I know this is still true today at Data Kind. One thing I think about is the folks that were involved that you now know in a different context. So for example, um, when we ran our first New York data dive, we had to find data ambassadors, people to work with the organizations. And I'd heard through the grapevine about this great data scientist who was at DE Shaw. She was doing a lot of kind of you know hedge fund work. Um, 
And uh, she worked with the New York Civil Liberties Union and, and she was incredible. And that, that person was Kathy O'Neill. And, and, and Kathy has said, you know, her kind of move into looking at the more kind of justice lens of data science and writing books like Weapons of Math Destruction really started around that time of that data dive. Um, oh, I know she's probably being nice because I'm in the room. I'm sure that she probably had that idea already. Uh, but at the time, you know, she was a data scientist like anyone else. And now, of course, is known for for kind of a bigger field building role. And so you yeah. think about, you know, her going through, you know, DJ Patil when he was still at LinkedIn, hearing us talk at the Strata conference and saying, hey, we've got to boost this. Let's get this going in San Francisco. Um, and so I, I think that was really exciting. It was exciting at the time, but especially in retrospect to think, man, they're really the, the people attracted to this cause went on to do great things. And I think it's exciting to think about who listening to this in five years is going to be that version, you know, of the next kind of AI for good movement, yeah. who, you know, that's a volunteer on your team who's going to end up doing that. So I think that's, that's why it's been really uh, something really cool about data kind of, that I, you can see only kind of with perspective. And, and I think that's where it gets really exciting for all these people watching. This is like, there's, there's so much to do still. Yeah. Yes. So much to do and a field that is ever evolving. So it's going beyond just the need for data talent that we saw persists through this, this last decade, but also more thoughtful data talent. I mean, thank goodness the world is starting to ask questions about the ethics of data science and machine learning. So it just seems like the requirement for something like data kind is ramped up even higher. Not only do you just need data scientists, you need thoughtful data scientists thinking about the application of data science for good in the social sector. So I, I think it's just in incredible to see what's happened over the last 10 years, but so exciting to think about what's going on in the next 10. Very uh, exciting. Yeah. And, and one of those I, that I will say is uh, just to, to nod that I, to how, uh, as I've sort of watched what's been you know, going on with data kinds growth, we've seen the, the leadership and the people involved, both of the chapter, but especially the staff level is so exciting. Because as we mentioned early on, we were sort of accidental founders in a way which is good for the early stages of data kind. But now it's really nice having Lauren leading and coming with a sense of what the social sector needs, tons of experience in running tech-driven organizations uh, and really kind of taking data kind into its next phase. So I, I am super excited about that to move a little bit from the past and think about where this goes next. So yeah, so super exciting. I, I know this is data kind of, of course has been an incredibly exciting part of my life and something that I care about very much and care for deeply going forward. And so it is just a total honor to get to be here uh, celebrating it, albeit virtually, uh, for the 10th anniversary. Uh, Craig, any closing thoughts before we give it a big old happy anniversary? Same again? thing. Big honor. Really excited about just how how this is still going, the momentum and, and this, the excitement still there and, and uh, the opportunity is all still there. That's just amazing. Exactly. Uh, so with that, we want to wish you all a giant happy 10th anniversary again. Uh, I should say we can't be there because Craig and I are going to co-experience another life milestone uh, this weekend, which is that I'm getting married. And Craig is, of course, coming out as my best man. So we'll be doing that. But the whole time we'll be thinking about data for good, of course, the most important. Of course. Thing. And yes. all of you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we wish you much luck. We send much love. And once again, a happy, happy 10th anniversary. anniversary. <laughs> Take care, all. We'll see you out there. Bye, everybody.